The dollar is facing a global rebellion and China is leading this push for de-dollarization. They are doing everything they can to dethrone the dollar because that is the real power behind the US economy. Now, China's aim has always revolved around economic growth and winning through global trade. But one big obstacle has been standing in their way for decades. It's America's ultimate weapon, the US dollar. And because the dollar is the reserve currency, all other currencies are traded against it. The euro, the yuan, the British pound, every currency on planet Earth is valued against the greenback. And because of this, China has a big vulnerability. They are an export giant. And to remain number one, China has to keep their currency cheap. China has to buy and hold a ton of US dollars to keep the Chinese yuan suppressed. He has even reached a point where China is the second biggest holder of US treasuries just behind Japan. If we look at their debt holdings, China is clearly de-dollarizing. They are reducing their bond holdings month after month, but they still hold nearly $860 billion of American debt. They have no choice because the dollar is the primary currency for global trade. If you want to buy commodities like oil, wheat and gold, the world still demands dollars for the majority of their exports. And according to the Bank for International Settlements, the dollar was one side of 88% of all foreign exchange trades. And this means for every 100 forex trades, the dollar was involved 88 times. Plus, according to the Fed's own estimates, the greenback accounted for over 70% of global trade invoicing, especially in the Asia-Pacific region. And that is a monstrous amount of trade that is under the dollar's control. And this is why Beijing, they are raising hell for the dollar. They are tired of funding their rival. They are tired of buying and selling stuff in greenbacks. But unless they break out from the reserve currency, they will forever be buying dollar assets. And this means indirectly helping to fund America's own efforts to move against China. It just doesn't make sense. So what gives the US dollar its power today? And why is this addiction so hard to break? And let's understand what is holding up the dollar as the world reserve currency. And a lot of us, we like to focus just on the petrol dollar system. And if you're new to this term, it's basically an agreement brokered by the United States with Saudi Arabia way back in the 1970s. And because of this, oil in the world today is now priced in US dollars. And this means there's now an organic demand for dollars in the world. If you want the most important commodity, which is oil, to keep your economy functioning, you need dollars. But that's only one half of the story. The real system that is keeping the greenback on the throne is in fact the euro dollar system. Because for decades, global trade is priced more and more in dollars, the world decided to stockpile more of it. And we can see that even though the world is moving away from the dollar, it is still nearly 60% of global reserves. Countries still keep a ton of it because they have to. It goes beyond just importing oil from the Middle East. You see, it all has to do with the global bond market. Countries and companies around the world all have to raise money and they do it by issuing debt. Nations issue government bonds to raise money to run the country, while companies also issue bonds to raise capital to expand their business. They borrow money to fund their operations. And this is how the modern world works today. It all revolves around credit and to attract the most investors in the world. They issue their debt in US dollars. Investors like it because the dollar is considered the most stable currency due to its global demand. For example, the car maker Nissan in Japan issued $8 billion in dollar-denominated debt back in 2020. Countries like Turkey also priced their government bonds in US dollars as well. They raised $1.5 billion just last year. And because global debt in US dollars keeps growing, it creates an enormous incentive to acquire and hold even more dollars. But it also becomes a trap. And let's say you are a company and you issue debt in dollars. When it comes time for the interest payments or when the bond matures, you need to pay back your investors in US dollars. And unless you default, there's no escape. You need to find a way to get the reserve currency. And this is why breaking the dollar is just so difficult. It's a monumental task because of the petrol dollar system and the euro dollar. This creates a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's keeping the greenback on top of the world. And that's why we see China taking steps to rock the pillars that are holding the system up. On one hand, they are trying to break the link between oil and the dollar. And on the other, they are trying to shift global trade away from the reserve currency. And we have China buying Russian oil and gas using the Chinese yuan. And this is setting a precedent for the world that, hey, if you want energy, 
you can buy it without using dollars. And this only gets stronger with Putin vowing to promote the wider use of the Chinese yuan as an international currency. And during his meeting with President Xi in Moscow, Putin made this pivotal statement. We support using the Chinese yuan in transactions between Russia and its partners in Asia, Africa and Latin America. And chances are, he's going to start pricing Russian energy in yuan very soon. And this is the first pillar that China is chipping away at. They are moving to remove the link between energy and the dollar and they are making aggressive moves to make this a reality. And just recently, China completed its first LNG trade settled in Yuan. A French oil company, Total Energies, sold 65,000 tons of LNG imported from the UAE to China and they priced it using the Chinese Yuan. And this is groundbreaking because it shows the world there are alternatives to the energy trade outside of the dollar. And this trade didn't involve Russia or any of the BRICS nations. The oil came from the Middle East and was sold by a major French company. And this tells us that at the end of the day, nations and companies will always act in their best interests. And this is China's first step in breaking the petrodollar system. They can't tell the world to stop issuing debt in dollars or force countries to embrace the yuan. The free market doesn't work that way. China can only show the world that it is in their best interest to break away and transact in other currencies. And as we mentioned, it's going to be a monumental task and the dollarization will not happen overnight. But here's the reality. More and more countries, they are beginning to shift away from the dollar. They are talking about finding alternatives away from US financial hegemony. And most recently, we had finance ministers and central banks from Southeast Asia meeting together to discuss more bilateral trade with each other. And a key topic was how to break away from their heavy dependence on the US dollar. They agreed to use more local currencies for their trade settlements. They want to reduce their risk to major currencies like the dollar or the euro. And according to Indonesia's central banker, the more the country uses local currencies, the better we can withstand global financial crisis. We also have Malaysia discussing with China to form an Asian monetary fund. They want to reduce their dependence on the dollar. Their leader Anwar told the world, there's no reason for Malaysia to continue depending on the dollar. But why are countries turning away from the dollar? It's not really because they love China, but because the threat posed by the US dollar is just so great. Which brings us to the Federal Reserve and how it controls the world economy. Because the dollar is the world reserve currency and countries hold so much of it, the Federal Reserve is effectively the central bank of the world. Whatever the Fed does affects the global economy and no country can escape its effects. Central banks around the world, they are all reactionary to the Fed. And let's use an extreme example here. If the Federal Reserve tomorrow hikes interest rates to 10%, this will cause another currency crisis for the rest of the world. Even other reserve currencies like the euro crash against the dollar when the Fed hiked rates last year. It will be 2022 all over again when money flows to the United States to chase higher yields. And this outflow will cause a wave of currency depreciations while the US dollar appreciates. And this makes US imports cheaper because remember, everything is priced in dollars. So inflation in the United States comes down at the expense of other countries. Similarly, if the Federal Reserve, they print $10 trillion tomorrow, this will devalue the world's stash of US dollars. The US now has $10 trillion more to beat up the prices of global commodities and unleash another inflation hell. Purchasing power outside of America will just plummet. But if another country decides to do the same, the effects will be very different. And let's use Argentina for example. If Argentina decides to print $10 trillion, they will just unleash hyperinflation back home. That's because the majority of the world doesn't hold the Argentine peso in any significant amount. And this is why the US dollar is more than just a reserve currency. It can be a weapon of financial destruction. But guess what? China is getting a helping hand to de-dollarize the world and it's coming from the United States themselves. And if this was a football match, a soccer match, the United States have scored multiple goals on their own team. They have torpedoed the credibility of the US dollar, especially in 2022. And that is leaving the way open for China to make the moves we are seeing today. And the first is obvious. We are talking about the sanctions on Russia and that includes seizing their central bank reserves and the price cap on Russian oil. And if those events didn't happen, China wouldn't have the perfect excuse to de-dollarize the world. 
and just listen to what Marco Rubio, a US senator, said about the threat to the US dollar. And this came after Brazil announced their trade deal with China to bypass the greenback. And he said, we won't have to talk about sanctions in five years because there'll be so many countries transacting in currencies other than the dollar that we won't have the ability to sanction them. And this is exactly why so many countries are afraid of holding on to too much US dollars. Sanctioning a country's assets to bend them to your will isn't a smart move. It only hurts the reserve status of the dollar. And the second is just as bad, which is the tremendous deficit spending of the United States. We have the US moving towards another potential default as the debt ceiling crisis grows closer. We have Wall Street now pricing in a 2% of a US government debt default. That's a five-fold increase since the start of January. But here's the truth. We know chances are Congress will raise the debt ceiling again and kick the can down the road. The US will continue to borrow more money to service the debt. But the world is getting tired of all this excessive borrowing because this is only going to lead to an outright default one day or borrowing even more money to pay off bondholders. They might just inflate the debt away. And this obviously can't continue forever. According to the Congressional Budget Office, the interest payments on the national debt alone is becoming unsustainable. The net interest cost will account for almost 40% of federal revenues by 2053. And what happens when it reaches 50% or 60%? Will the US default then or borrow even more? And this is a very big realization that the world is waking up to. And this is why more and more countries are accepting China's advances to move away from the dollar. And there's no better call to action than China telling the world that they are buying gold. Because gold is priced in dollars, when you buy the yellow metal, you are effectively selling away dollars. And since last November, China has been buying gold for four months in a row. They are breaking their tradition of silence and we have to pay attention. And this is basically them announcing to the market, we have something big planned with gold. We are giving you a heads up that gold could be playing a big role in tomorrow's monetary system. Because if you think about it, gold is the ultimate asset for de-dollarization. Countries can dump their dollars for gold with plausible deniability. And if they start selling treasuries for the yuan, the United States definitely won't be happy. But if they buy gold, it is a neutral asset. It has been a store of value for thousands of years. And guess what? 2022 was a record year for central bank gold buying. They bought over 1,100 tons. But here's something fascinating. If we dive deep into the details, we can see there's unreported gold buying of 741 tons. There are countries out there secretly hoarding gold because they know the dollar is getting debased. And we have to watch the gold markets because if China truly wants to challenge the dollar, they need to convince the world that their currency is stable. And there's no better way to guarantee it than to pack the yuan to gold or at least a percentage of it, part of it. Even the US dollar was backed by gold to give it credibility before becoming the world reserve currency. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Will China succeed in de dollarizing the world or is it impossible to break away from the dollar? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.